political introduction. In 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades, before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power. For the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of the energy sciences. Energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy. And social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue, who will be the beneficiary? 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with the ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy, wealth of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name Silent Weapons. In conclusion, the objective of economic research as conducted by the magnates of capital, banking, and the industries of commodities, goods, and services is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low-class elements of society must be brought under total control, must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age, before they have an opportunity to, before they have an opportunity to question the property of the matter. In order to achieve such comfortability, the lower class family units must be 
disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the moat of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even the bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extracting themselves from their assigned lot in life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class.